Welcome to Educator.com. Today's session is about raw data, dot plots, and stem plots. What do we mean by raw data? Well, data, raw data is just going to be data that's recorded, and it's going to be in the sequence in which they are collected, and it's before that we do anything to the data, before it's even processed or ranked. Uh, some books will call this ungrouped data. So raw data is data in its purest form before anything is done to it. So for example, maybe we're looking at the ages of 25 teachers at a school. So imagine that you have some sort of spreadsheet and you have your teachers. Maybe the teachers are in some random order. And then you have their ages. And maybe the ages are in random order also. They're not sorted from youngest to oldest or oldest to youngest or how long they've been teaching at the school. It's just a data set of just data. Often when we have raw data, what we want to do is try and summarize it in some shape or form. So what we're going to be looking at are some ways to graphically display these distributions of the data. And so this is more or less going to be a checklist of things to look for when you create a graph of this, these raw data observations. So the first thing is we want to try and sort of make a guess at what the center and the spread of that distribution is going to be. Similarly, we're going to be interested in looking at any sort of clusters in, in our data set. Maybe there's some gaps in our range of data. Another one to be concerned about, and this will come into play in later lessons, are, is this idea of outliers or extreme values. So things that are maybe very large compared to the rest of the data, or very small compared to the rest of the data could be an outlier. And then, you know, any other unusual features in our data. Now, another thing that we want to be interested in is the shape of the distribution. And so typically, in any stats course, there's going to be three main shapes of interest. So the first one is symmetric. So I'm going to draw what's called the bell-shaped curve here. But the symmetric distribution means if I draw a line down the middle, it splits everything 50%, 50%. So it splits your entire distribution in half. That's a symmetric distribution. The skewed distribution, we have two different types. A skewed distribution means, skewed right means I have the bulk of my data here and then the tail, or very, very few observations, are pointing to the right. So this is a right skewed distribution. Typically, economic data is going to be your most frequent example of a right skewed distribution. You have very few people making money here, and you have very few making tons of money out here. And then we have left skewed distribution, which means we have the tail out here pointing to the left, and then the bulk of our data out here. So ideally, if you're a teacher, a good left skewed distribution might be grades in a course. You like to see your students get a lot of high grades and very, very few people getting low grades out here. And then occasionally, some textbooks will tell, talk to you about a uniform distribution. And a uniform distribution just means that all the values have the same frequency or the same probability. So it's a constant uniform height across the range of your data. Also, the uniform can also be symmetric. The fact that we could draw a line through the middle and it's a mirror image of each other on each side of that line. Okay, so the first 
the first distribution that we're going to look at here is going to be what's called a dot plot. Okay, so for the dot plot here, we have the data set for the Philadelphia Phillies in the 2008 playoffs when they won the World Series against uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. And it also has their stats against uh, the Dodgers as well. Well, to make this dot plot, what we're going to be doing is we first make a number line to represent the entire range of the data. And the data seems to go from 1 to 13, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. The other team they beat were the Milwaukee Brewers. I knew I was thinking of something. And uh, what we do here is at each value, the first person, Brett Myers, had three RBIs in the playoffs. So we make a dot here for Brett Myers. The next one, Eric Bruntlett had one. Jason Worth had four. Ryan Howard, nine. Shane Victorino, 13. Carlos Ruiz, four. And now that we have four, we stack them. So there's two dots there representing people who had four. Pedro Feliz is another. So we put another dot there for him. Matt Stairs had two. Jimmy Rollins, that's the second one there. We have Pat Burrell at eight. Chase Utley at nine and Joe Blanton at one. So that's our distribution here. Now what we want to do is we want to try and find, first of all, the center and the spread of the data. Well, maybe a quick way to say the spread, the spread goes from one through 13, right? That could be later on, we're going to define that as a range. Uh, the center, it's going to be sort of hard to talk about the center, but we seem to have two clusters of data. So all these observations, one through four, this might be a cluster of data. You could make an argument that this is a cluster of data. Also, this observation, Shane Victorino's observation, Maybe that's an outlier. It seems really extreme compared to 9, 8, and especially 1 through 4. And then finally, what we want to do is we would like to figure out the shape of the distribution. Well, we have a bulk of the data here, sort of have a gap, a few observations here, and then maybe one out here. So we might say that this is a right skewed distribution. So in general, this is going to be the game that we're playing as we're, as we're working through these observations, that we want to try and identify these key features of the graph after we make our dot plot.